Today's episode is brought to you by the Vegas Beer Guys. Everything sequel contains explicit language. And why the fudge not, you melon farmer? Hello and welcome to the Everything Sequel Podcast. This is the Bill and Ted edition. Today we're pitching sequels. Michael Schantz here of the How Dare You Awards. Joining me, Pitchmaster himself, Tom Stewart of Lonesome Whistle Productions. Hit me with an everything soup, Tom. Our girlfriends are most chaste. <laughs> I really love that line. You know, it's not the most fun. It's not the funniest line, but no, that but... kind of innocence and naivety that's behind yeah, exactly. the characters and the movie it makes it so endearing. Yeah. Um, they are really charming characters, and they're both sweet. Yeah, and they're both kind, and I love that about this series and these characters. Right, because it would have been so easy to make them something else definitely and i well, love like, that they I don't mean, it's you could you could make them like the basically like the porky's kids or yeah right last times at ridgemont high you know like they're just despicable people but that's not the you know that's that's i think that's another way in which this is revolutionary you know it's like we get all the everything we get with teen movies about adolescent sexuality but yeah none of that ickiness yeah that is so hard to take now, or a lot less of it, and certainly and, not. Yeah, unless it's, it's not the characters. unless it's committed by evil robots, and unless it's sort of slapped onto the movie because they don't know any better. Yeah. But never, it never kind of it never permeates the characterization, and that's that's the key, I think. Yeah. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to pitch our sequels. Very hard, very interesting to pitch a sequel when the last two sequels are 30 years apart. And also when the last two sequels, uh, you know, are sufficient to close the series. Right. Like it. Because it... we're going to have to do some retconning unless you choose to go in between. Those are our choices. Yeah. Um, where, <laughs> where where have you planted your flag I did the thing I think I might not normally do which is I'm I'm continuing on from face the music oh interesting yeah. well I'll given that I'll let it out of the bag that I am doing a I'm doing an interqual oh <laughs> You pitch something I might normally pitch, well, exactly. and I'm pitching something you'd normally pitch. <laughs> That's this is true, yeah. Terribly exciting. It is terribly exciting. Well, now was uh, was it difficult? Not and not uh, doing what you were doing would have been difficult, which is why I didn't do it. Tell me about it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, I so... still I have so much written down here, and yet it's still nebulous it's still it's still kind of that's it's not yeah. fully formed i think mine is but i know my reference points and that's where i'm coming from i i think i came to the conclusion that given that the bill and ted of face the music on are, are no different from the bill and ted of bogus journey i'd rather do a story that's set closer to bogus journey where they're justifiably still those characters mm-hmm because I think the further you go down the line, the harder it is to kind of keep them uh, the Bill and Ted we know and love. Right. Uh, not that I think as we both argued, you shouldn't be doing that 30 years after mm -hmm. <laughs> the movie. Like, it just doesn't make narrative or character sense. Yeah. But well, given that I have the choice, I'm going to do something that is, like, um, close closer in... Close to the closer to the end of Bogus Journey. All right. Since we do have that thirty years, we cer we certainly do. And and you know it's conceivably 
we could have had a a third Pill and Ted sequel sometime in the early nineties, I think. Oh, absolutely. Uh I think uh even if they were disappointed in the box office of Bogus Journey, the box office wasn't such that you didn't think they would make like you know, it's surprising that mm. we didn't have one in 94 95 that 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 time frame. Yeah, and I guess I guess in that period of history that the options were 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 more limited really, you know, you could you had you'd either make it as a theatrical release or a video release. Yeah. Um that's it. That's all. I mean now you've got some you know, TV series you can sure. s- have a just a standalone streaming movie. You can do anything. Well, maybe they because they also had the cartoon and so maybe they <laughs> there you go. felt and what a great cartoon it was. Yeah. Like, fun memories of that. <laughs> um But I think the budget would have been slashed. Which means you probably yeah, right. would have got that uh, honey we shrunk ourselves effect. Maybe. That you know, they would have done a, a video sequel that wouldn't have looked Nearly up, like up to the standard that we're yeah, used to. Right. See also Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> and Children of the Corn, which we were just talking about. Yeah. Both la- both still off air, off air. in straight to video hell. Yeah. Uh, so it could have for, gone... for further information on the Hellraiser, look at our uh, watch along. Oh, yeah. We, and, and, on we, YouTube. and we got one that was like way down the line. We like... <laughs> so this is the movie they had to make just to keep making movies. Just, just right. Just to keep the rights. <laughs> Which is a thing. Guys, we got to make a movie so we can keep making movies. <laughs> well, put something together. <laughs> Take your camera down to the border and film <laughs> something. Right. All right. Um, I, I, b- before this revelation, I was going to volunteer to go first, but I think we should go chronologically. I'd like to hear yours and then hear mine after that because... We, okay. we could have them all. We could have I'm them happy both. To do you that. know? Yeah. So the title of my pitch is Bill and Ted's. <laughs> nice. Get that out of the way. Yeah. Bill and Ted's <laughs> Extraterrestrial Adventure. All right. So we've traveled through time, we've been to the afterlife. Where can we go next? Where haven't we been? Space. Space. We're going to space. <laughs> All right. And another question. I hope we see Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another question for you. And Machete. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's still up there. That film's not finished. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Daddy Trejo's been in space for the last five Five years filming this. <laughs> um, who we, we've only we, we're gonna we're gonna focus on our only to this date extraterrestrial character. Station. Nice. The only alien we've seen so far. Yeah. So Bill and Ted. Uh, th- so we're we're set the scene. They're recording their first album. So we're a little after um, Bill and, the end of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. They're they're recording their first album as Wild Stallions. Mm-hmm. Um, we begin, they've shaved off the beards. That's probably right. the first thing we'll see. Kind of uh, Harrison Ford fugitive style. Yeah. <laughs> um, that'll be like our, our kind of first scene. It's the fresh, freshly shaved, ready ready to go to bed. The princesses aren't there for some reason. Figure that out later. Um, okay. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was literally just about to ask if the princesses asked them to shave or not. Uh, oh, that's good. I might use that. Um, and then they're visited by in the middle of the night by God. Excellent. As voiced by Taj Mahal. Excellent. And known as the gatekeeper. We know it's God. Mm-hmm. Um, and... He's got a mission for Bill and Ted. They're on a mission from Gad. 
he's he he says you know he tells them you know once uh when station helped you uh he was granted freedom from death went back to his own <laughs> went back to his own planet i realize this sounds like poochie <laughs> as i'm saying it out loud <laughs> i have to go back to my planet now um <laughs> Uh, but anyway, Station has gone back to his own planet, and God tells them that his planet has been taken over by robot Bill and Ted's, which... Plural. Uh, so the Bill and Ted's that he built, he took with him. They turned evil and started building other Bill and Ted's, and now <laughs> his planet's being overrun by evil robot Bill and Ted's. And so uh, God has sent them on a mission to uh, save Station's planet... But we're gonna have some overlap. Go Ret ahead and return, return <laughs> to return the favor for what Station did for them. Yeah, and they're like, yeah. How do we get there? And then God brings down a starship, and so of course we get, you know, another William Shatner reference. What does God need with a starship? Star Trek Five: Final Frontier. Yep. Oh, I t <laughs> you don't have to tell me. <laughs> Just in case there's, there's some people out there who. Uh, have not descended to the depths of Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Yeah, you and I had to talk about Cybok <laughs> during a cocktail. <laughs> Cybok is canon. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> if Spock's sis is Spock's sister that we've never heard of is canon, then his brother that we've heard of <laughs> once is. Absolutely. Um... So anyway, this is not about that. So yeah, so I mean, the rest, and I haven't really developed the pitch beyond that. They 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 take the starship, they go to Station's planet, and uh, the rest of the movie is them trying to uh, save Station's planet from uh, robot Bill and Ted's. Um, All right. At one point, I envision that the Bill and Ted's will have kind of terminated themselves, so that they're no longer the money for nothing looking. Uh, mm -hmm. Dire Straits video Bill and Ted's that they've actually they're actually <laughs> the Bill and Ted's from Bogus Journey kind of those kind of latex covered androids gotcha uh, and that they will steal the spaceship head back to Earth and pose as Bill and Ted once again um, and so you know hope there'll be a little bit of kind of planet hopping between Earth and and the station planet so we get that sort of to and fro, which I think is essential for this series. Yeah, right. There you go. But that's but that's essentially my pitch. All right. It's it's either it's either a movie <laughs> or an episode of that cartoon. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, well done. I like that going to space. Mine yeah, has I mean, some, where else? Where mine else has to... some space too. Well, there's not there's nowhere else to go, right? I mean, that's uh, we've covered all the bases. Well, you'll see through the, my okay. combination. But, well, maybe I'm wrong because we're staying on Earth, but we start basically in space. Uh, I am. <laughs> Earth is in space. What's that? Earth is that's, in space. You're right. You're right. You're right. I am calling my uh, sequel <laughs> Bill and Ted's heinous. Peregrination. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I knew that would be your reaction. Yes! Now, what... So, so what... What... <laughs> what aspect of the titles that we've had so far make you think you can use a, a $20 word like that in the middle? <laughs> no, none. <laughs> no, no, none whatsoever. That's the point. <laughs> People will have to look it up. At least, you know, extraterrestrial, it's a long word, but people know what it means. <laughs> they've seen E.T. I just like that word next to the word heinous. Heinous peregrinations. Yeah. Not not Unless plural. this is about a peregrine falcon. <laughs> we have a problem. All right. We start off in outer space, and we are introduced... To what looks like Station, but is actually <gasps> Station's evil twin. Oh. Terminal. Oh, I thought you were going to go uh, Nyotas. 
No. I thought you were going to nibog ni- 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 it. Yeah. Nilbog. Nilbog. Nil- rather, Nilbog. I'm very yeah. impressed that I just did station backwards. I, that, that Correctly. Was, right? <laughs> Terminal. Um, <laughs> you're gonna go, you're gonna go ape shit. Uh, Terminal Terminal decides all on his own uh, to try to circumvent what Bill and Ted had done at the end of Bill and Ted Face the Music of bringing the world together. Right. So he's gonna send some minions back to kill Bill and Ted. He's going to go back and try to kill the old ones we see at the end of the credits. The end of the credits of Face the um, Music. Face the Music. Okay. What Terminal doesn't know <laughs> was that the last song that Bill and Ted created uh, was only a temporary fix for the universe anyway. And that the world would become unstable again. Or rather, you know time as we know it would become unstable again because that song was a shitty song (laughs) and therefore couldn't possibly bring everything to fruition in the way that they wanted. You could make so much out of that. (laughs) How do we ever think that song was good? Exactly. So, so that's why he can send them back to any time. And that's why he chooses to send them back to, uh, to face the old ones because he thinks they'll be easy to kill. And, of course, he's going to send Station's built robots to do this, Ah. which he has captured. Station, we'll see Station in the corner in a cage saying, Station! (laughs) (laughs) So, by the way, are you getting any vibes yet? Vibes? Yeah. Of the Reference vibe. Reference vibe. Yeah. Dash, uh, Masters of the Universe? I don't know. What are we talking about here? <laughs> well, we're talking... On, uh, I'll, I'll save it. Okay, Hang save on. it, yeah. I'm thinking uh, Masters of the Universe. I just... <laughs> I don't know why. At this point, we'll probably get a uh, flashback and a little bit of uh, uh, narrative explanation. Death is being punished for coming to Earth twice to play in a band. Uh Uh-huh. And per an agreement between God and Beelzebub, he's banished forever uh, from his powers and being able to, you know, bring people to, you know, uh, transport people and be death himself with all of his powers and be in the underworld. I'm going to, I I, I don't want to, I want to tread tread on your pitch, but it reminds me of something I did like about Face the Music that I didn't say, and I was so aggressively negative in that episode, I just want to say it. Right. I like the idea of death being demoted in hell. Yeah, exactly. I I really like that idea, too. So that's what I gleaned onto. I I like that. That's a a nice... And it's one of the few notes of consequence from Bogus Journey. Right. In that movie. So that's, I liked it for that reason, but it's also, it's, it's a nice premise. So. All right. I, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, that wasn't all bad. Well, we're gonna, yeah, exactly. What we're gonna see is a flashback scene in which Death tells both Bill and Ted that this is going to happen, hmm. but gives them a little piece of paper that says, if you need me, say, Death, I need you. Mm. And I'll come. <laughs> it will break the spell of whatever power yeah. that God and death has put me under. By now, this should really be reminding you of Highlander 2, The Quickening. Really? Well, it's almost plot for plot point. Is it? <laughs> Evil Station is Michael Ironside. He's going to send the robots back. Bill and Ted... With their instruments in their hell home, they're going to actually take the heads off, which which will make them the younger men that we see, you know, in the 2020 that era. Like, mm-hmm. they'll be themselves now. Right. But it'll be like a Highlander 2, the quickening thing where they get to de-age and become their, their former younger selves. 
I, I mean, my knowledge of that movie could never compete with yours. <laughs> Speaking of 30 year gaps. Yeah. Well, that's also interesting as they're both Bogus Journey and Highlander 2 are both 1990. Oh, no, 91. 1992. It's 92, isn't it? Or is it 91? I think it's 91. Okay. Hang I on. I think it's 91 as well. That's gonna oh, you upset. continue your pitch. I'll look it up. All right. <laughs> so at this point, Bill and Ted. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, 91. I'm gonna, yeah, okay. Uh, we're gonna keep Kristen Shaw. She's gonna come back and tell them, hold the phone. So I was glad you <laughs> So glad you're young again. Uh, it turns out that the world may destabilize. <laughs> that song wasn't quite the song we needed. Bill and Ted think, oh my gosh, we got to get, you know, to the studio. All right, we're on it. Don't worry about it, Rufus's daughter. Mm -hmm. Whatever the hell your name is. <laughs> uh, in the limo ride on the way, there's going to be a terrible crash on Mulholland Drive. They're going to have amnesia. Oh, well, well this, re this reminds me. <laughs> I mean, you did say the title of the film in your... Well, you're describing it, but I was going to say... I was about to make the joke that does she end up with amnesia <laughs> with a couple of little old people coming out of her back. Right. <laughs> so Bill and Ted are now going to have amnesia. They're going to stumble away from the crash. Needless to say, you Robert might see... Robert Forster a... will investigate. Yeah, you, you might see a cowboy. <laughs> a back-talking <laughs> yeah. back dwarf as in... Uh... <laughs> like Twin Peaks, right? Uh, I right now I'm I I would like to see Justin Thoreau as not a director but a a music producer mm. who literally they were coming to see him like the boss was forcing him to work with Bill and Ted mm. who based on that last song think aren't good musicians. Mm -hmm. And so you've got that aspect. Bill and Ted wandering the streets. They don't know who they are. They find a note that says, if you need me, say, death, I need you. Mm -hmm. Or call death and say, I need you. They bring out their phones. They're trying to find death in there, you know. And finally, they turn over the note and it says, just call it out to the heavens. So they do that and death arrives. Death still, you know. He's got some limitations on his powers. He wants them to get their memory back, but he can't take them to hell. He can't take them to the underworld. He can't take them like on the journey they had before. So he kind of tries to do that through the music business, trying to remind them of who they were. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, we haven't had the princesses. We haven't had the daughters yet. At some point, Death is going to get the idea. Oh my gosh, it's family. The that's family. Why I took, that's why I took them to outer space, by the way, just so we didn't have to deal with that. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but it will be the the love that they had for their daughters, for their wives, that bring back their memories and their ability to write the song. Mm -hmm. And that is their heinous. Peregrination. I already blocked out that that's what it was called. <laughs> You're welcome. It's really good. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I have issues with the title. I think, I as think always, you're, I how think could you're you not? Creating titles that are more about baiting me than <laughs> this than one getting, was making the best title. This but, one was. This one, I specifically wanted to bother you. I'm going to say as well that. Uh, we both added space, but you added amnesia, which I think is is another missing yeah. plot element in terms of what we haven't seen that you could imagine them putting Bill you know, doing with Bill and Ted. I'm sure it happens in the cartoon at some point. Well, and I, I couldn't I couldn't go to uh you know, an alternate space and time for them to deal with philosophical ideas, so I tried to match, you know, one of the best films in recent decades highlander 2 
<laughs> and try to put them in that milieu. So there yeah, you have and, it. And, and the other, the, I mean, obviously you're going after Face the Music, but it feels like a return to Bogus Journey and referencing right. other art movies. Yeah. That's what I wanted. So, so I like it. There you have it. It's certainly classier than <laughs> Bill and Ted's Extraterrestrial Adventure. <laughs> like I say, there's the option. That doesn't mean it's better. If it if if you can't develop it into a feature length strip, it's a great episode of the cartoon. There you go. <laughs> All it's right. Like it's the Star Trek approach. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the yeah. in Star Trek: The Original Series, they were just like, "Man, this doesn't really work as an hour drama. Let's turn it into a half an hour cartoon." <laughs> and then they had like you know, two series worth of. Cartoons when of they cartoons. started making them. So that's it. Yeah. The people can vote. I have a question for you. Yeah. We didn't really address this in the episodes. Hmm. Uh, is this it for Bill and Ted? You mean in far as? Do you think there will be more Bill and Ted movies? That question has been rattling around my brain. Monetarily, they don't have a reason to, yep. but they can negate that because of COVID. Critically, oh, I, don't, they... I don't think they're. I don't think the industry is accepting COVID as an excuse. I, I think it's different for, say, a movie. At that time, as opposed to movies that came out even six months later. Oh, okay, I guess they're still making Wonder Woman movies. <laughs> yeah. Or are they? I, I I imagine we're going to see a third one. Okay. It doesn't matter. We all hated that second one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, fortunate that it was only a streaming But what's interesting movie to me... people watched on Christmas Day. Yeah. <laughs> what's interesting to me is that, like, monetarily, they don't have a reason for it. Critically, they do have a reason for it. I know. And those things should be reversed. Because you have COVID, it probably would have been a bigger hit than it was, yeah. aside from it came out at exactly the wrong time. Mm -hmm. And critically, it's valued far more than it should be, and it's going to make, it'll, it kind of gives them a reason to make another one. Whereas I'm not sure they should, unless they choose one of ours. And we know Keanu Reeves Because is... they can do yours and still be in it, because we can do, just de-age them. No. <laughs> just to piss you off. Just <laughs> if, <laughs> if that's what my script end up, ends up being used for, I think I will I will commit suicide. Uh, I'll just drink bleach and be done with it. Um, <laughs> Donald Trump style. Exactly. Um, and I'll say Trump did it, and he'll end up in prison, and the world. No, will be he a won't. Place. No, he won't. No, he won't. <laughs> Um, that's interesting. I, I, I'm trying to think of, I, I think both movies allow for the possibility of ending where they, ending with that movie. Mm hmm Um, which is sort of, is in, like interesting. We don't see that a lot in sequels. We normally can tell definitively. If they want to go on. If they want to go on or whether they're really, they're really drawing a line under it what's interesting too about face the music is usually usually the clue would be obvious when you have a final tag mm. after credit scene and yet because this one's about nothing it gives you nothing it just it, it's, it, it just confuses everything yeah but i think that's what i think it was meant to sort of wrap things up that's what yeah that's how it felt but they didn't die. My sense which is what was, I thought was going to happen. Like if you put, if you, if you, they've already died. They already died and came back. So right. I guess it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It's the but it's yeah. The if, you, rule. if you force me to make a choice, I would say that they felt they were happy with what they did and they're done. That was yeah. my sense of. I it. think. I think probably in the big scheme of things, they felt like they got away with it, especially when you see the critical reactions to, you know, yeah. equivalent reboots belated you know belated franchises yeah 
Like they, they, you know, they got away without, without a crystal skull type reaction. <laughs> right. Right. So they probably, they're probably not going to push their luck any further. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I agree. Hmm. Yeah. But I'm, uh, you know, I'm happy to lend my services. But then again, <laughs> Indy five, who saw that coming? Still going to happen. Well, yeah, I know, but if you can come back from Crystal Skull, right? You, mind you, I suppose there's three. You could also say there's three, three new Star Wars movies mm -hmm. after the prequels. Same. I mean, who would have thought yeah. that would ever happen? It's a funny old business. Disney, Disney would have said. Yeah, well, that's well. You know, the, I think you know Disney buys up. Uh, Disney buys Orion. Oh, mm -hmm. so so who who made who made villain? <laughs> In lieu of research, I'm just going to ask you, who probably doesn't know the answer, this question: Who made Bill and Ted face the music? Who are Endeavor content? And well, Hammerstone. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine on that one. I didn't. I read that they because it's not often you see production companies and you think I don't know them at all. <laughs> who the hell are they? <laughs> but I didn't. I read something that they had to sort of revive Orion. Maybe not just for this film, but but for the rights, you mean, like so that they could make it? I think so. Wow. Well, maybe we'll follow up on our on our next trilogy of trilogies. Yeah. Installment. We could follow up with some some Orion news. So. <laughs> <laughs> Old man shouts at <laughs> old man shouts at cloud <laughs> research. <laughs> I don't want to see the Orion logo if they're gonna follow it up with a movie I don't understand. <laughs> Full of gender bending and all kinds of stuff. Fuckers. <laughs> and a gay robot. I didn't like it. Make this soup hot. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake. I want those matzo balls flaming! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. All right. So there you go. We'll follow up on... Yeah, on, we'll try uh, We'll try to, We'll try try to. to have some news. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, try to have some... The lo Fox logo, isn't it? Fox. <laughs> Fox, we'll try to have some news. There you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a pitch, we want to hear it. You can send it to us. Uh, send your ideas to Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. By all means, write an email. Write it all out completely. We'll read it. To everythingsequel at gmail.com. Work on your title. <laughs> Certainly more than I did. Or no, actually work on it just as much. And try to bother us. <laughs> I'll find that ter oh, terribly us. exciting. That's right. That's who you're not going to be bothered. <laughs> I, 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 I want to see an apostrophe. Oh, did you have an apostrophe? I didn't even notice. What, did, what was your title again? Bill, Bill and Ted's. And... Okay. Heinous. Yeah, I, that part that part of the title is fine. <laughs> That's not where my issues with the title begin. Oh, I know. <laughs> even, he, even heinous you got away with. <laughs> That's within the Bill and Ted lexicon. Peregrination. It's not a fucking word you hear oh, in relation. Even when you say it, it makes me so happy. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh, it made it all worth it. All right. <laughs> For Tom Stewart of Lonesome Whistle Productions, Michael Schantz here. I'm from the How Dare You Awards. Say goodbye, Tom. Hey, Uzzes, stop. <laughs> There's your apostrophe S. There you go. Should have been in the oh. fucking title, but there it is. <laughs> All right, everyone. Until next time, we'll have a brand new trilogy for you. Oh, yeah. Coming out soon. The second in our trilogy of trilogies. There you go.
I like to think I know something about beer, but nowadays even I get overwhelmed when confronted by the exhaustive selection of craft beers they have at bars, breweries, and even grocery stores. Back in the day you had one, maybe two craft beers to choose from, and if you were confused, you ordered a Guinness. But in beer stations like San Diego, the craft beer options lately are in double, sometimes even triple, digits. So what's a beer drinker to do? You need what I need, the Vegas Beer Guys. Your beer of choice should be a perfect blend of malt and hops. And so a live show about beer needs that same balance. And the Vegas Beer Guys matches beer expert Dan Aker with self-proclaimed beer novice Stephen J. Weiss. The results are eminently drinkable. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They'll try new beers. They'll tell you about beers. Think of them as your beer sherpas guiding you up a foamy-headed mountain to reach the peak of your pint. God, I need a beer.